So this was full yesterday. So I think you may have had some, but also there's a cork floating in it. <laughs> there's a cork. There is a cork. Is that all empty? There's a little bit left, but there's a cork floating in this milk, and I have a feeling that you have something to do with it. I love milk. <laughs> I do. Well, I don't remember putting a cork in it. Was it? <laughs> I don't know. Happy. I understand. Oh, yeah, I understand. Evening, we have corn chicken pasta with mozzarella and tomato sauce and courgettes and some garlic bread in the oven. Hurrah, hurrah, hurrah! All is good with the world. We are on the third day of Three Cheers for New Year's and I'm already filming, panic filming, videos at quarter to one in the morning. This is good, isn't it? It's a great start. To be honest, I've just had a very like low-key day. I went and spent some time with uh, my brother and Giovanna and my mum and dad and Buzz and Buddy this morning. Had a little sing sesh with Buzz and then came home. I tidied my flat because I've got people coming over at the end of this week and you know I'd rather not have them sit on a sofa that's covered in my underwear clean underwear but still and then I filmed a video and then I wrote for the rest of the day filming me writing is incredibly boring it's basically just silence and tapping on a keyboard and then occasionally I stop and take my headphones off and just let out a really big ah! put my headphones back on and carry on. There's only so many times you can time lapse that before that gets really boring. Something I was thinking of today though, which I briefly mentioned to Scott in one of my uh, moments of taking my headphones off and just screaming at the four walls, is that whilst writing can be really therapeutic and really cathartic, you can put your characters in situations that you'd love to be in or make your characters say things that you'd never dare say that you've always wanted to say. It can also, do the opposite but it also works the other way if you're having to relive a negative past event in your own personal life in order for your book to seem more real in the same way that actors if they have to like cry in a role they'll think about something sad that's happened in their own lives that, that makes them cry when they're on stage it's kind of the same with writing if there's something that's happening to your characters that you have also lived through, you kind of have to sit and relive that past event and think about how you felt and therefore how would your characters feel. And sometimes that can be really, really, 
really hard. So I had a slightly difficult day of writing today. It's funny, I've been criticised in the past for putting myself um, or traits of myself and the people that I know into my characters and my books. And I've never really, A, taken it to heart because B, I've never really understood it. Because every author does that. At least I've never met any authors who don't do that when I've discussed this with them. The only reason that people know that I put traits of myself and the people around me into my books is because I'm a YouTuber and my personal life and who I am as a human being is very broadly and plainly put on the internet in like over what 600 videos now on the internet for everyone to see. Most authors aren't famous or aren't YouTubers so you don't necessarily even know what they look like before you start reading their book and you definitely don't know what they're like as people. You know Evie lives in the past like I do and that Cherry is anxious and worries like I do because you've watched my videos and you know that I'm a what if anxious worrier and that I put those traits into those characters. But if I'd never made a video in my entire life, I'd just be another faceless author and you would just be reading another book. So I just find it a very odd criticism when people say, oh, you put you put too much of yourself in, in your books. Because the majority of authors do, but the only reason you know I do is because you know who I am through YouTube. So yeah, I never take that criticism to heart. I just find it very interesting that people don't don't think about that. Just a few random thoughts from me at one o'clock in the morning. But I really should go to bed because I'm up at around half seven tomorrow morning because I'm going to my publishers in London, in like central London, to sign a thousand copies of the paperback of All That She Can See, which may be the most books I've ever signed in one sitting in my lifetime. I have no idea how long it's going to take. But there's something really therapeutic about the repetitive nature of signing books over and over again. I really enjoy it. So I think I'm in for a good morning. Thank you for joining me for day three of Three Cheers for New Year's. Remember to donate, better raise as much money as we possibly can, and lots of love.